Frankenstein extra. Three more things about chapter five. Number one, look at the way Shelley weaves both gothic and romantic elements into the narrative. In the morning after the creature comes to life, Victor is wandering the streets of Ingolstadt. And at this point, Shelley includes a section from Coleridge's The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, which refers to someone walking the streets with, with a demon following him. Like one who on a lonely road doth walk in fear and dread, and having once turned round walks on, and turns no more his head, because he knows a frightful fiend doth close behind him tread. Now don't skip over this bit as some weird intertextual reference that only 19th century readers will appreciate. It's full of gothic features that you can write about. Look at the lonely road, the fear and dread, the, the frightful fiend and the disturbing sense of being followed. It's Shelley's way of highlighting Victor's isolation and terror, his anxiety and inescapable apprehension that will, of course, follow him through the novel in the same way that his creation does. From a romantic perspective, the rhyme of the ancient mariner can be viewed as a quest for knowledge. In the mariner's case, it's a search for spiritual knowledge, or in Victor's case, in contrast, it's a doomed pursuit to discover the secret of life, a journey that will end in misery and death. Number two, the most important two words in chapter five, I saw. When he recounts first seeing the creature open his eyes, Victor says, by the glimmer of the half extinguished light, I saw the dull yellow eye of the creature open. Now, the, the light here might be interesting in terms of the creation of a suitably dark gothic mood and the colour might be significant. There are so many references to colour in this chapter. Write an essay about it. But to me, the most important thing is those two words, I saw. Victor sees and he's shocked, disgusted, repulsed. He forms a judgment based on the physical appearance of his creation. And unlike God's response in the Bible when he creates Adam, it is not good. Shelley repeatedly explores the connections we form between aesthetic outward perceptions of beauty and inner virtue. When he encounters Victor's younger brother William, he hopes he might have found a child young enough not to be tainted by such prejudices, but no. When William sees him, he declares, monster, ugly wretch, you wish to eat me and tear me to pieces. You are an ogre. And later in the novel, of course, old De Lacy will provide the creature with a possible solution. Can he use the old man's blindness to his advantage and win him over with his acquired knowledge and wisdom before anyone gets to see him? Initially, of course, his hopes are raised when De Lacy says, I am blind and cannot judge your countenance, your face. But there is something in your words which persuades me that you are sincere. The arrival back at the cottage of Felix and Agatha soon dashes those hopes, though, doesn't it? So look at how Shelley uses sight in the novel, but widen this out to look at perspective more generally, because in a novel in which the framing of the narratives is so important, this has to form part of your discussion. Number three, the night. So many of the most significant events in the novel occur at night or in a dark and gloomy setting. Much of the action involving the creature takes place at night because it enables him to wander around undetected. Think of the meeting between Victor and the monster in chapter 20, or Victor and Elizabeth's wedding night, for instance. In contrast, Shelley uses light to symbolise knowledge and discovery. Robert Walton writes to his sister Margaret about the eternal light of the Arctic, and Victor hopes by discovering the secret of life to pour a torrent of light into our dark world. It's striking that there are six references to night in chapter five. It begins, of course, on a dreary night of November and Victor passes the night wretchedly. Even when light is mentioned, the darkness is deepened with references to the half extinguished light of the candle and the yellow light of the moon. So don't just look at the symbolism of light in the novel. Look at the darkness too. The darkness points us to ignorance, the hidden, the forbidden, and transgression. If you found that useful, then like it, share it, and subscribe to English Gorillas.